Hello, you're watching Proactive Investors. Thanks for joining us. And joining me in the studio now is Dr. Mohamed Chuker. He's the CEO of Archer Exploration. Welcome, Dr. Chuker. Yeah, my pleasure to be here. <laughs> now, you've got a major announcement for your company uh, you're about to tell us about for the quantum tech side of the business. Mm -hmm. But before we get on to that, just briefly tell us what does your company normally do? Yeah, so we, uh, we develop and integrate advanced materials uh, in applications in reliable energy, uh, human health and quantum technology for the betterment of society. So what's this new announcement all about on the uh, quantum tech side of things? Yeah, so we've started, uh, we've started our, uh, building our quantum chip and our project is called 12CQ and so we've commenced uh, building the chip. So this project you've named 12CQ. Uh-huh. Why is it called that to start with? <laughs> yeah, 12CQ, 12CQ. Uh, so the 12, 12C comes from carbon on the periodic table and uh, the CQ, of course, carbon uh, quantum. So it's just 12CQ. It's a bit catchy. It rolls off the tongue, don't you think? <laughs> Maybe not quite, but it will in time, I'm <laughs> yeah. sure. And what do you hope to achieve with this project? So we want to make quantum computing practical. We want to make quantum computing accessible, and we're going to be doing this by building a quantum computing chip, a processor, that's able to process quantum information at room temperature, uh, and that could do this uh, by easily in being integrated into um, our current semiconductor uh, devices. Why is it so vital that it's at room temperature? Because that's Sounds like it's a very important thing, obviously, in yeah. your field. Why? Why is that? And what is different about this project to other quantum computing projects? So, in a sense, why do we want to make this happen at room temperature? All our devices work at room temperature. I mean, your phones, your computers, your televisions, these kinds of things work at room temperature. Um, why is it different? Well, current quantum computing technology, most of it works at really low temperatures, sub-zero. Uh, it's not very practical. Uh, the others that try and meet this uh, problem or face this challenge of room temperature, uh, they use special materials or light, and uh, it's very difficult to integrate into modern electronics. So again, not very practical. What we pre represent with 12CQ is uh, a unification of these two challenges, and we're able, or we want to be able to uh, develop a room temperature quantum computing chip that can be easily integrated into our modern day devices. Where is the project based? So the project primarily is based in Sydney. Uh, we have our staff here in Sydney and we've just received uh, access through an access agreement to the NanoScience Hub, the Sydney NanoScience Hub, uh, to build the chip in the research and prototype foundry, uh, which is purpose built for these kinds of uh, fabrication. Sounds quite specialised. And you probably went through some of the applications, but what would you say are the top three goals of this project? So top three goals would be, uh, first and foremost, would be to get our patents uh, registered uh, in, in foreign jurisdictions. Uh, so to get those through, uh, they're currently under examination. So Australia, the US, the EU, Japan, Hong Kong, China. Uh, so that would be uh, and Korea, uh, that would be fantastic because that would give us freedom to operate in those markets. The second uh, would be you know, demonstrating proof of concept, building a prototype, simply because that shows uh, your, your viability and, and that can help catalyze commercialization. And thirdly is uh, going into commercial partnerships with uh, heavily resourced companies, let's just call it that, uh, because that would allow us you know, that global scale, that global integration, uh, that global distribution. So to be patented, um, it's obviously got to be a first and original. Mm. Is that you've obviously explored um, that that is the case. And if it is, how, how can you compete or sort of um, be a breakthrough, uh, a groundbreaker, if you like, with the global powerhouses like in Asia and other parts of the country in, in the world? Mm. So uh, you touched on it, IP is one, one important issue there. Uh, first and foremost, I mean, we have something that no one else in the world has. And, and that's a, a conducting material, carbon-based conducting material that is capable of processing quantum information at room temperature. And that forms the core of our technology and those materials are available in our inventory. And we intend on integrating those materials into a device and building a prototype of this device. Now, this kind of knowledge is not easy to acquire. This is very difficult. And so that knowledge and that technology is protected uh, through patents and the rights to those uh, patents and to that IP 
have been licensed exclusively to Archer by the University of Sydney who own that IP. I think second of all, uh, we've been able to attract uh, brilliant people, right? Uh, so Dr. Martin Fuchsler joined Archer in mid-February and um, he's a global pioneer in building quantum logic devices and he's very passionate about 12CQ and he you know, built these devices uh, at the University of New South Wales during his PhD and fellowship and I can just say you know, he's known for building the world's smallest transistor, a single atom transistor. I mean this is wow. where the bounds that he pushed computing to. I mean this is where we were at and he, and he did that under the mentorship of another great uh, quantum pioneer, Dr. Uh, Professor Michelle Simmons. So we have, we have the right people on board and Dr. Martin Fuchsler who will be managing 12CQ and um, recently I'm very happy to announce uh, in our announcement and here in that we've uh, signed access agreements to the prototype foundry at the Nanoscience Hub, the Sydney Nanoscience Hub and that will give us access to world-class facilities and infrastructure, tools, equipment and people that are in line with, with some of the best uh, semiconductor foundries in the world that we need for this project to be a success. How exciting is that for you as the CEO? Is it, is it like a bit of a baby for you? Like you're a nanotechnology specialist and inventor yourself. Mm. Like this must be a real passion project for you. It's always wonderful to see uh, technology crystallize, you know, to go from the idea stage uh, and, and to realize these technology. And of, uh, of course, uh, materials at the heart of all of this, because again, and I, and I say this often, that materials are the tangible physical basis of all technology. So to see an idea uh, precipitate into a material which can then be applied and used into technologies that can uh, benefit all of us, uh, that could benefit all of us, that, that's something um, that I enjoy seeing, yes. Really exciting. And just finally, um, how do you think, if this is successful, it will be uh, um, used in quantum computing in Australia? Mm. So, Look, I mean, you've just <laughs> you've just reminded me of those TV shows I watched as a kid. Was beyond two thousand, right? So, Mohammed, what do you think quantum computing is going to be used for? Uh, look, it does excite me uh, the way we're we're moving in the financial markets, the way we transact, the way we see currency. I think quantum computers can have a, a very positive impact uh, in, in that field. Uh, but the chemist in me just wants to see. Uh, the quantum computers being used uh, to really predict or simulate new materials that can help uh, in reducing the negative impacts uh, humans have on our environment. So that's something that I would really like to see. Really fascinating stuff, and it's a, you know it's obviously an ongoing evolutionary process, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Thank you so much um, for your time, and we look forward to following this project with you and seeing how it unfolds. No problem. It's very nice to meet you. You too. Um, so that's Dr. Mohammed Chukair, the CEO of Archer Exploration.